Oh, we got your type of vehicle here today. We got a Jeep, and <laughs> it looks angry. It's like, it, it oh, does you know look like, angry. It, it, it looks like your angry nano. Looks like my angry nano. Yeah, yeah there you go. It's pissed off. It is mad. It is upset. Um, so, obviously, we're doing something with. Uh, it's bad because you put an IK sprayer on his bumper. No, I think that was you. That was <laughs> not me. That was all him, guys, uh, and gents, ladies and gents, everybody that's out there. Like always, I want to do my little spiel. Thank you for tuning in for another edition. This is our 51st, if I remember correctly. So thank you all for making these things happen. And if you haven't, please like, share, and tell everybody about us. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're all over the place. So with that, why are you making this Jeep angry? <laughs> I just wanted to add, uh, thank you for tuning in and watching. Uh, we know you have other options and we appreciate everybody that uh, tunes in to watch us on these live classes. They're a lot of fun. Well, haven't you seen the dip in your paycheck lately? Because yeah, no. I've, I've been using that money to pay the people to come in and watch these things. So, you know, uh, I'm trying to help you guys out. Uh, uh, Week or the week before, I was at a um, the Southern Detailers Conference, and probably the most common comment uh, someone would walk to walk up to me and say was that they really liked watching our live classes. That was at a, a detailers conference. Just it was a, a, a repeating comment. I just kept hearing. So thank you, everybody. That's a that's a good. Yeah. I, I like hearing those comments instead of get off the air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like you, you're, you're t it's too long. Um, so t we're going to be talking about. Uh, taking care of exterior plastic trim. And um, the, actually, the, there, there's some things I'm gonna share. I'm gonna go deep on this, but we have a special guest with yes, us also. Yes, we do. We do. Actually, uh, speaking of special guests, Yeah, we have me. a special guest with us, so I don't gotta carry all the water, so to speak, or carry all the uh, plastic. Uh, is that like an old school saying? It is. Carry I don't all carry the, water. the weight. Mama got someone to, to help me out here. A right. real expert. All right, you want to introduce our guest? Well, they, our guest today for this, and the creator, the president, the inventor of a product called Solution Finish is none other than Mr. Chris West. The one and only. Bom, bom, bom. Yay. Hey, Thank you Chris. For having me. Chris, it's All really right. a pleasure having you here. I know this was kind of short notice, and I, I really appreciate that you took time out of uh, your busy schedule to join us. And, and just help me to share with everybody uh, everything, like do a brain dump, as I like to say, on on plastic and how to take care of it using your products. Nice. So. Well, I was hoping I was going to be the 51st episode, so out of all the ones <laughs> I've been watching... Well, you made it, Chris. I bided my time, right? Um, well, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have guys like you supporting me and uh, uh, everybody out there that uses Solution Finish and those that don't know about it. I'm, I'm hoping you can be able to you know, clue them in on the best way to uh, restore their plastic trim, running boards, quarter panels, cab extensions, uh, tonneau covers, uh, uh, anything that's uh, rubber, vinyl, and plastic. Yeah, the cladding around the windshield wipers, which is really common on cars. And under the hood, sure. there's a lot of plastic trim and uh, cladding. You know, I get that all the time. People say, can, can you use it under the hood? Well, solution finish is non-flammable. And the... the there is a lot of things you can do inside the um, uh, under the hood that will really bring it to that extra special uh, uh, level. You know, you got uh, you have your caps, you have your reservoirs, you have your hoses, uh, and it it does really really make a difference. There's a lot of I, I've seen your classes on engine cleaning, and once you do that, um, it, just wiping down those little areas that are, have the the black plastic uh, gives it that extra pop that uh, the pros are looking for. And if you want your car to look like the pros, that's a good way to go. Yeah. I think where I would like to start out with this, Chris, is um, uh, to start at the beginning. And um, a number of years ago, I taught a dedicated class on restoring uh, exterior plastic trim at uh, Mobile Tech Expo. Um, it was the least favorite class I've ever taught there because Compared to so many of the other topics, like guys really like paint correction, it just wasn't as exciting, you know. And uh, it was well attended. And and uh, before the class, I went to my favorite local salvage yard, Snake Road, Snake Sa Snake Road Salvage Yard, and I actually pulled a ton of uh, dead, dying, oxidized, ugly plastic trim off cars to to demonstrate in that class. But when I created the PowerPoint for that class, um, and I started to tr really to look deep at this issue of you know plastic trim, 
what I put into that PowerPoint and what I share to this day is this. If you buy a car, any of you watching this, you buy a car and it has any type of plastic trim, especially the detailer's nightmare, pebble textured plastic trim. While your car is brand new, right then, start taking care of it. Because here's what most people do. They buy a new car, it has this plastic trim on the, around the side mirrors, the bumper, the cladding, just anywhere. And because it looks good, they don't do anything. And then time takes its toll. So the next week it still looks good. The next month it looks good. A year later, it looks pretty good. But about two or three years later, the owner of that car will wash the car and then, because now there's a dramatic difference, they'll look at that trim and go, oh my gosh, the trim is starting to look faded and ugly. And then they start looking for some kind of miracle product like you see on late night TV to try to do a set it and forget <laughs> it. One and done. And there is no such thing. And what they should have done no. is right then and there, while it was in good shape, start using what, both of these products. And, and it's called PM, preventative maintenance take care of it while it still looks good and it'll never get ugly. And anyway, that's what I taught in the class. This is, I try to reinforce this in all my classes while the plastics in gray shape start taking care of it right now. I agree with that hundred percent. And uh, a lot of guys will wonder why their plastic went from being really uh, pretty nice. And then it seemed like overnight that it, it it failed and started turning gray and started getting chalky and blotchy. And uh, what I found and what a lot of people don't know is they will, they will use something simple, a silicone based product, wipe it down the trim, they're taking care of the paint, their windows and interior, and they put this silicone based uh, dressing on their plastic. Well, what they don't realize is that silicone, when it gases off when it um, evaporates it creates a hydro peroxide gas at the surface level of the part that gas is actually what accelerates the oxidation process so they start seeing it look a little dull so because it's starting to oxidize they put on something and now it's getting worse so going back to your point if you start putting on a product like solution finish that has antioxidants and light stabilizers in it it gives it UV protection. It's like uh, it's like sunscreen for your plastic. You start doing that early, and you're gonna you're gonna find that your plastic is not going to get to the point where it's gray and chalky and it looks bad and it really it takes away from the appearance of the car. Um, preventive maintenance from the very beginning is uh, paramount and. Uh, with over-the-top plastic sealer that I see on your table there, it'll be coming out another 30 days, 45 days to uh, Auto Geek. But when that happens, the special thing about that plastic sealer is it has extra UV protection. So if you start using that from the get-go on your plastic, new plastic, uh, well-maintained plastic, you're not going to have the problems that uh, these guys have with their avalanches and their <laughs> Honda Elements and, of course, the Jeeps. You know, so that's a very good point, and I, I, I don't think I even talk about that enough. Well, uh, the, the reason I started, um, uh, I included this in this PowerPoint, this would be like seven years ago, was because if you don't take care of it, then usually what happens is the plastic does fade, it does turn ugly. And so the next thing is, is now how do I restore it? And that starts with the cleaning step, getting it really clean, trying to get some of that oxidation off. And, and here's the big picture point. It's easier to take care of plastic that looks great. It's really hard to restore plastic that looks ugly. So if you don't let it get to that point, you don't, you're not going to need any of these other cool tools here, which are, we sell them and they're cool, but I'd rather just get something that's in, <laughs> in new shape, start taking care of it, and then you never got to do the hard part. That's why. I, I, I agree. That's, that makes all the sense in the world. Uh, okay. And people don't realize that um, the plastic itself doesn't oxidize. It's the impurities and the additives that they put in the plastic when they manufacture it. That's why, let's say a Mercedes, BMW, it takes two or three years to start getting uh, that, that 
uh, discolored uh, appearance. A Saturn, let's say, in a year it would start going to ship because it's got so many additives in it. So if the thing that I want everybody to really realize is that once it really starts oxidizing, you cannot stop that process. You can't stop it. All you can do is slow it down and make it uh, make it look uh, uh, presentable uh, through the uh, uh, through using to, to me using solution finish. Uh, people want a permanent fix, and there is no permanent fix because even if uh, even if the solution finish itself is permanent, the plastic is not permanent. It's going to degenerate, and it's going to start. Uh, uh, breaking down over the years. You know, something I, I like to teach in all my detailing classes is, uh, you know, nothing is permanent, not even you and I, okay? Uh, we are going to last. Uh, and the closest thing we get to permanency is a, a bottle of wine, but then when you open it, it, it quits lasting. So there's just nothing yep. permanent. So everything's about preventative maintenance, even like uh, eating good, doing exercise for ourselves, and, but taking care of our plastic. So uh, now... Let, let's let's go ahead and talk about now this Jeep. Do you know what year Jeep this is, Yancey? Yeah. It's a 2019. Sorry, I was yeah. muted. So, so this Jeep is not really bad. So, you know, uh, 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 Chris, you know, I've brought in some really horrible, neglected <laughs> avalanches for my three-day classes, yeah. and and showed just dramatic before and afters. Uh, this is something that uh, one of our coworkers owns. It's not in super bad shape, so this is what we're going to be using. I have a saying, uh, kind of like call Carl Yarborough saying, "Run what you brung." I go, I say, I use what I have. This is what I have, so this is what we're going to use. But this kind of is going to go back to uh, the preventative maintenance, taking care of it before it gets bad. And for everybody watching this in the future, if you're going, if you own a car that's got any plastic trim, these should be two staples in your car detailing supplies. In your garage. Uh, but we will go ahead and start with how to uh, correctly or to safely clean plastic to give your products the best chance of doing their thing. And I always like to show um, a variety of tools and everything I'm going to show here we sell. But I've got three different ways to scrub plastic. So before you want to treat the plastic, the first thing you want to do is wash it. And this is usually done as you're washing your car. So Saturday afternoon, Saturday morning, getting up, washing the car, wheels and tires, but also taking care of the plastic. And you want to try to get it as clean as you can. So I have, besides the car wash soap, I've got three uh, just all-purpose type cleaners over here. I've got uh, the Blackfire APC. So this is an all-purpose cleaner. This is the 303 multi-purpose cleaner, which is an all-purpose cleaner. The difference between these two products is really that this is a product that you you can spray on, scrub, wipe off, and it leaves the surface residue free. This all-purpose cleaner here, you really want to rinse it first, and that's what the IK sprayer is here for. There's some water in there, so if I use that, I can rinse it off. And then an extra step that I oftentimes use is I use a panel wipe. After I've got the plastic as clean as I can, I go ahead and use uh, what's commonly referred to as a panel wipe in the ceramic coating industry to give it that secondary wipe just to make sure everything's completely clean before I start to apply the solution fit. Finish. So the uh, and, and Chris, please at this point, uh, go ahead and chime in if you got any uh, tips, techniques, or product recommendations for getting neglected plastic really clean. Well, you you have three uh, two very very good products there. Uh, I agree with you. I, I've seen your videos and I've seen your classes, and you you make a very important point that everybody should realize is that your plastic needs to be thoroughly washed and clean. And to me, it's not just gr grease and oil and uh, road grime. You, what you want to do is you want to clean out the pores. You want to break down any previously applied, let's say, uh, silicone-based products. Um, I like to always add, you know, you talk about the panel wipe. After you use the degreasers, the all-purpose cleaners, the decontaminants, whatever you choose, whatever you have to clean your plastic, like you do, I like to end it with a nice alcohol wipe down. So your your panel wipe is perfect for that. Um, you want to, you're basically giving it a alcohol bath, you're flushing out the pores to give a solution finish the ability to, to absorb into the pores of the plastic uh, once you clean them out. So, and you're a pro at it. I've seen you use the, the machines for scrubbing and cleaning and that itself, it, it's like everything else. The preparation is as important as whatever you're going to apply. 
You know, and, and uh, the analogy of, uh, you know, a lot of people look at a custom paint job on a custom car and go, what a great paint job. And we both know that all starts with the prep work. You know, the paint was just the yeah. frosting on the cake. The hard part was the prep work. I agree. I and, agree. And, and that's why, I like, I like to show machine scrubbing. So um, the other day ago, I was at a friend's house, and he had some non-skid in his boat. It had a gas leak. It turned it brown. He took and he scrubbed it by hand and got it pretty clean. I brought over this little guy. He re-scrubbed it. Boom. Totally clean. Yeah. There's just something to be said for machine scrubbing that the human being is just not strong enough to duplicate what a machine can do. And I always like to joke and say, have you ever seen the movie Terminator? Machine always of beats course, human. Right, right. Yeah, machine <laughs> always beats human. I'm not going up against Arnold. He's going to win. Right, right. Okay, so I've got a couple of real common brushes here. Uh, I mean, everybody's seen this one here. You find these at Target and any auto parts store. And then here's the Coran. We sell both these here. And look, these will work to get in there and, and scrub. But to, to go and take it a step further, this is a, a skill cordless drill. And I like to show cordless tools when I'm working around water because I've been shocked before using plug-in <laughs> corded tools and that's no fun. But you can take this and, I mean, you can really get in there and just scrub the heck out of that plastic. And same thing here with, this is the cordless Flex PE14 with the, what they call a heavy duty DA brush. You can turn this on and you can, I mean, you can really scrub hard. And what happens when you when you switch over to machine scrubbing, especially neglected aged uh, plastic trim, is instead of working by hand, you have your cleaners working for you, but you also have this scrubbing action that uh, that just completely strips anything on the surface off, but it also helps to kind of remove any dead plastic, some oxidized plastic, to get you down yep. to a free, uh, to a clean, pure base, so the dead stuff's gone. And in most cases, it's not gonna alter or change the appearance of the plastic the pebble texture look it's not going to change that because of course these these plastic bristles are flexible correct so, that, yeah I, I i've seen you do it a million times and i agree that that kind of prep is going to give you the the pro results that everybody's looking for and what it does is it allows solution finish to uh uh, absorb and, and bond better to the plastic. The cleaner it is, the better it's going to be, and the long, lo the longevity and uh, durability is going to be increased. You know, so, uh, and you know, around the window cowl, it's hard to get in them with the machines, but- We're dropping you out a little up. bit, Chris. Your, your internet connection is dropping just a touch. Okay, while you work on that, okay. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, we'll go over here and demonstrate some of these products and show the proper techniques and process right. for prepping the plastic for the solution okay. finish. Okay, I'm gonna switch here, then I'm gonna do a little pitcher and pitcher action. We'll okay, so up. Yancey, um, yeah, hold I'll on. Keep this one. in focus. I'm going to, I'm bringing uh, Chris <laughs> up. <laughs> And I'm assuming because of the way you've got this Jeep set up for the camera, you want me to go ahead and work on this fender here? Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. Now we got you both in there. Okay. So, I, again, this, this is, uh, you know, what, three years old. This isn't in too bad of shape. But th that's back to the bigger picture point. This is when you want to start taking care of it. Another year or two being parked outside, and this can start looking real ugly real fast. So, um, Yancey, is there any, uh, anything you want to add to this before I get started? I mean, uh, I'm good with showing just about anything. No, you can go ahead and, and do you and so okay. forth. Uh, 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 Chris, you got anything you want to interject before I start? No, no. I might be I'm having my, a little bit okay. of a lag issue. Work. Okay, so tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show a, just a traditional APC to start with. Now, um, I did not talk to the owner of this Jeep. I mean, I know the kid, he's a nice kid. So I don't know if he's put anything on this at all. The Jeep is obviously clean. So here's, here's just one way you could approach this. So spray this down with your all-purpose cleaner. And then using your tool of choice, you know, my tool of choice is this, but you're gonna be about 600 bucks into this tool here before you can use it. Something like this would be less than 100, but they both do the same thing. So then just turn this on, low speed, and then just start massaging those brushes over the plastic. And you'd be surprised at what a great job this will do to clean that plastic. Just 
just like that. And because this should be rinsed off, here's my uh, that's our, that's our running water. This is our running water for <laughs> in the garage, yeah. yes. And this is just tap water. There's nothing special about this. It's pressurized tap water. Okay, I guess that makes it special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to flush it all that way. Later on, Yancey, when we're done, you can come in here and clean the floor. Oh, why? Gee, thanks. Why, golly gee. While he's doing that, Yancey, uh, I'm getting a real serious lag here, and I've got five bars on my phone. I don't know what the, the deal is. Um, so you might just have to deal with that. I got none of that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a problem. Okay, so here we have plastic completely scrubbed clean. All right. Let me zoom in. Folks, we're having a little bit of an audio problem, but uh, it's I think it's, it's an okay. internet just, connection problem that we're having. Okay, so, I mean, this is just as clean as can be. There's nothing slimy on here that I feel from a previous, you know, vinyl or rubber type dressing that's been applied to there. So that after you get your plastic clean, and here's a tip, because these are cordless, when I teach my classes or if I do this on my own, I go out and I machine scrub all the plastic before I wash the car. That way, when you're machine scrubbing, if you get any splatter, when you come back and wash the car, all that splatter gets removed. And that's usually before a, a full-on detailing project. So for me, most of the time, all my washes are what are called prep washes. I'm prepping the car for paint correction. And so wheels and tires, plastic, um, I machine polish the glass before I wash the car. Anything, any engine detailing, any headlight correction, anything that's going to get the car dirty or make it messy or get splatter on it, I do that, then wash the car, and that'll get rid of any of the splatter from an APC or a, a glass polish or an engine detailing on an engine, engine degreaser. And that way you save steps and you're not working backwards. You're not getting the car clean, then getting it dirty because of the other things you're doing. Make sense? Makes sense. Okay. And actually, the, the, the problems are on our side, so I think it's our little Bluetooth speaker that's giving us that issue. Gotcha. Okay, so let me just come over here and I'll grab these products here. You do that. And you know me and uh, my feelings about nitrile gloves. Aww, you're a detailer now. Oh, I use the word feelings, too. Feelings. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Chris's product. Chris. Can you explain to the audience exactly what solution finish is? What is in there? Well, if you're going to be able to hear me, how's that sound, Yancey? I, I, I got it. Okay. Well, solution finish is a modified carbon. So what it is, it's not an ink, a dye, or a stain like people talk about. What it is, it's a modified carbon, so with penetrating oils and the modified carbon, it actually absorbs into the plastic. And then, as I mentioned before, the antioxidants and light stabilizers that's in it will give it UV protection. So uh, everything on the market uh, now that they're calling a trim restore, all they're doing is they're taking their clear silicone-based dressings adding Indian ink, adding uh, a dyes in it, making it black to give it the appearance of a black trim restore. Uh, solution finish, in my opinion, and I have all of them, it's still the only true trim restores because there's nothing else that has that kind of formula. So it, um, uh, it does three important things. It's solvent based, so it will break down any of the uh, oxidation that's on the plastic drives the carbon into the plastic and then locks it in for a long-term durability. Gotcha. Okay. Now, Yancey, would there be any benefit to doing a tape line on this uh, from your camera angle? That's if you want to do that. Uh, we could do it up front here where your camera is going to get a little bit more of it. Let me grab a little bit of tape right. just for fun, for that dramatic before and after um, visual difference. And what I found is 
cameras so, have a hard time really picking up how how nice and dry and a, what a nice matte finish, uh, uh, solution finish, uh, uh, the results that solution finish will give you. Uh, and that, that's about as nice as you could possibly do a, uh, a demonstration on. Okay. Um, now, when you say carbon black, Chris, I always like to share with people, and if I'm wrong, it's okay, you can correct me, but a simple form of carbon black would be the underside of a barbecue, the soot, that's carbon black. That's exactly right. And there's, uh, you know, they, there's ivory black, and when they say that it's uh, ivory, ivory, ivory carbon, that means that it's basically all uh, animal bones that have been uh, torched at 1200 degrees and, and gives you that soot. And then it depends on uh, how they process it. So you have uh, you have the, the fire uh, carbon, like you're talking about, you have the charcoal carbon, you have the bone carbon, but it's all the same thing. It's, it's a burnt material that then has been processed through uh, uh, mills to grind it to, uh, solution finish is milled three times so it's half the size of a virus. The actual uh, carbon itself is so small, you can't even see it with the naked eye. You need a, a, a pound of it to be able to actually see it. It's pretty incredible stuff. If I, if I take a shot glass of this carbon and I pour it on a table, it will, you'll see it hit the table, but in 15 minutes, you'll have a film of black carbon all over your uh, your table your floor it's 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 so small that it 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 floats and grabs in the air so yeah, there's a there's a really two or three important processes to get it to be able to put it in a bottle gotcha and i just kind of wanted to share that because uh sometimes people yeah. kind of dig the little the little things you know little things are the big things right. but the little details Okay, so well, I just applied this to a, a microfiber applicator pad, and then all I've done here is I've just kind of massaged it into the plastic as, to whatever level that I can. Okay, so plastic is not the most porous material in the world, but at the microscopic level, there are uh, interstices and pores and pits and valleys and places for this product to go and gorge into. And of course, there's also to some level what's called capillary action where it, uh, liquids can move through a solid. So I think the bigger picture here is, you know, is you don't just do a quick wipe, you wanna take and kind of massage it in like I've done here after the thorough cleaning and then go ahead and wipe the excess off. Correct, Chris? Yeah, and the, I'm gonna really, really emphasize that point is that I get people to talking all the time and say, I, I put it on, it looked really, really great. I, I love the appearance, but after two days, it's still a little tacky. Well, that's because they skipped that last step. You have to wipe off the excess surface oil. You want to do all you're doing is the, the delivery system is the oil, and one if you don't wipe it off, then it's going to be a dust collector, it's going to get tacky, it's just not what it's for. You have to wipe it off, just like you're doing now. And, and this is why, like in our shop, I always you know, some people get really bugged when their microfiber towels get stained. Um, it doesn't bug me because at some point I'm going to need one that's going to get stained. So I always save my tatty towels for doing work like this, understanding that it's going to become stained and I'll wash it and dry it and use it again for a similar purpose. I also have my scrap rags. This is terry cloth. So now I'm just, you know, rubbing this really good to absorb and remove any of that excess. But I'd let it kind of soak there before I just instantly wiped it off. And, the, and that's good. Well, uh, guys ask how long they should let it dwell, sit on the plastic. Well, what I normally tell them is say, look, start at one end of the vehicle, go all the way around to all, applying it to all the plastic, put the cap on your bottle, grab your uh, microfibers to, uh, your old microfibers to wipe it off then you can start wiping it so you know it's almost like water on a paper towel it 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 absorbs immediately but if you let it dwell a few minutes as you're working away around the vehicle that's plenty of time uh to do the the wipe step you know you don't need you don't need 15 20 minutes sure uh, 
for that, you know. Yeah, and, and that's what I would normally do or teach is uh, treat all the plastic ones, then come back and uh, wipe off the excess. Now, I'm that's gonna put, process. this is your new product. Won't you tell us what this is as I go ahead and apply this to this one section, but mm -hmm. it's called Over the Top Plastic Sealer. Or would you do the well, entire thing first before you seal it? I'm just gonna do this one spot. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. I'll well, let you do the rest of the Jeep. Oh, why, thanks. Now you, now, you can do that. I like to see uh, at least a four-hour separation between oh, the oh. application of... Put that back in the box. Yeah, but I have a dozen guys during the uh, beta testing that have said they do the vehicle, they do the wipe down, they come back, and with a, uh, with a foam a sponge, they go ahead and apply... Uh, over the top plastic sealer and you can do that as long as you thoroughly wiped off the plastic so uh, and and uh, I did do the thoroughly part and um, through the magic yeah. of time-lapse photography four hours have just gone by <laughs> yeah <laughs> Very Very good. Good. <laughs> here it hold on here, seem hold like on. it because there's no break hold on, in the hold video. On. Let, let, let me do this let me yeah we're back. We're back. Right yeah, and, but thank you. <laughs> and and uh, 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 in my defense, this is a brand new product that Chris gave me before I went public. I've only used it once. I was happy with the first results, but I don't think I ever read the directions. <laughs> no, we did my wife's Jeep when you were down here for the class. And yes. we literally, it was like two days after we got the Jeep, we went through and did that over all the trim. And nice. it's still looking beautiful black to this day. Okay, uh, now, the technique now, tip, I'm, I'm just massaging this in with the foam applicator pad. Uh, anything else I could be doing here, Chris? No, but uh, if you find yourself where you just applied solution finish, you wiped off all this surface oil, and you want to apply over the top plastic sealer immediately, what I like to do is I'll take a paper towel, okay. hold it, and wipe off the plastic that you just applied solution finish to to get that last little bit of the carbon off the surface. That usually, uh, it makes it dry faster and it just makes it where you don't have that little bit of wet surface on it. Um, gotcha. That's my suggestion. If you're gonna go straight to the uh, sealer, wipe it down with a paper towel and you'll see the little bit of fingerprints on the, on the paper towel where the last little bit of carbon has been removed and you did it right you're using a a foam applicator for the uh over the top you don't use your microfiber uh applicator for the uh over the top you use the gotcha. foam and and yeah. uh and in my mind you know when i applied the over the top using this little piece of foam applicator pad you can see my fingerprints on there but i pulled very little product because i actually really massaged the hell out of it with this microfiber exactly. towel exactly you know so yeah. i didn't know about the paper towel trick i'll show that in my next class okay so now that's okay. been sitting there for at least a minute is this one i would go ahead and get a wipe uh you don't wipe it down you just let You're it done. you just let it dry you let it dry, and if it if you get some little streaks to it, if you get some little bubbles, not to worry. It it will uh, it will level itself, and it will definitely um, a, a, a dry clear. So that's that's the beauty of it. It is pretty user friendly, um, and it's just like solution finish. More is not better. You don't have to you know soak it. Just en enough on your microfiber to uh, have it applied to the. Um, See that looks great, right? I oh, mean, it looks great. Yeah. You have a you have a, you have a really nice uh, uh, surface to start with, but you can see the improvement that you can do and uh, achieve with uh, uh, just a little bit of effort, proper cleaning, apply solution finish, wipe off the excess surfaced oil. And one thing that uh, you know, I always see you do it, and I I enjoy that is that I put a steel ball bearing in every bottle of solution finish even the one ounce because one of the most important things about solution finish is you want to uh, vigorously shake it up that's you want to break up any carbon that might have settled to the bottom at first it's not a big deal but if it's been sitting on yourself for you know four to six months you want to really break it up um, but I, I think that looks great personally yeah. I'd buy shake it. well before use shake well vigorously <laughs> okay shake yeah to me that looks great and 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 even though this isn't very old this looks 
Better than the other one. It looks beautiful. And this is, if you just do this simple process, this simple process, okay, let me turn these the right way. Yeah, going the opposite way than what they need to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the simple process. Okay, two simple products. Any, it doesn't take a doesn't take any real technique or experience or skill to use these. It's not like using a wool pad, you know, to pull out sandy marks. Uh, you can keep your plastic looking good, and that's going to uh, maintain yep. the appearance of your car. It's going to also maintain the resale value if you go to sell it or trade it in. I agree. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, one thing on the paint, uh, you get a little solution finish on the paint when you're massaging it against the paint. Uh, not to worry, you can wipe it right off with your mic a clean microfiber. If it dries, just a little bit of a, you know, a light cleaner, uh, window cleaner, uh, uh, alcohol will dissolve it and take it. It only works on what it's supposed to. So you get on the paint or the glass, the chrome, you can wipe it right off. If you miss it, not to worry. The only time is when you have a really old oxidized paint that it's that it, it can absorb into and it's it hasn't been sealed with a sealer or any kind of uh, uh, protection. So, good point. You know, um, this last weekend, um, and I just posted a full write up to the Auto Geek Forum, my Facebook page, and my Instagram page, but I detailed a, a 2006 Toyota Sequoia. And uh, this era of Toyotas, they still shoot single stage urethane paint. It was extremely oxidized and um, it will stain. It's, it's a very porous paint and, and it'll stain with anything you put on there. Uh, but one of the things that I did, Chris, is I went ahead and after I washed and dried the car, uh, for all the plastic trim on that Toyota, I went ahead and rubbed it down with the solution finish. I did get some onto the paint, but I didn't care about it because I was going to come back and compound it really hard. And so it wasn't See, a problem. Right. And then, then I turned that porous texture chalky paint into something that was smooth like glass and now everything's going to wipe off. Then I put the, uh, the OTT back onto it. So, uh, nice. but yeah, uh, a good point on that. But, you know, again, just, you know, this is a, this isn't a real complicated process for everybody watching this, but what we just shared with you is two of the, uh, probably the most popular products on the market today. Is that, would you say that's fair, Yancy? Oh, on Detailing 101, it's the number one. Whenever somebody asks, I got faded black trim, solution finish, solution finish. I mean, it's like yeah. the immediate response that everybody goes to, so. And, and if you yeah. don't let it go, then all you really need is like a couple simple tools. If you let it go, now you're, you know, now you're getting into a more complicated process to get that plastic clean so it can accept the solution finish. Yancy, I think that's yeah. all I really got for this. Um, if you want, go out and hang there okay hang, we, hang we out right, hang there. right here yeah and so with that being said <laughs> we have viewer questions time yes you guys have been posting a lot of cool questions over in the comments so i'm going to ask these guys <coughs> we're going to get some answers directly from chris and oh i just lost chris where did chris go uh -oh. there's chris he's back. all right <laughs> um <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to get this going. Uh, let me just go through some of the hellos and everything that are out there. Uh, we have, whoops, I need this. this Chris, we, we, we reach a very uh, wide spectrum of people around the world. It's always interesting when Yancey kind of does this part and in, in, uh, in, in states all the different geographical locations people are watching this from. It just goes to show you that car detailing is a passion that knows no boundaries. This is true. I all agree. right, we have Ron Shoup coming on. Hey, all. We have uh, other cross talking here. We got Functional Doc saying good afternoon to Thomas Kirby. Marcus Golden saying hi, guys. Uh, we have our first question here is from our friend Tom uh, Kirby here. Question one, how to tell if the trim was originally gray or black? I found a Cadillac SUV black with a gray rear bumper and a sidestep. Thought it should be black. Is there a difference? Because you do have a, another product for a gray trim That's also. Right. Well, Tom, I get that all the time. And uh, once black plastic is really oxidized, it turns gray and chalky. So first appearance, it's hard to determine if it's gray or if it's uh, because it's uh, originally gray or if it's gray because it oxidized. And what I'll do is if seriously, if you just get it wet, uh, put a little oil on it, put a little um, uh, cleaner on it, any of the, uh, any kind of oil, uh, you're gonna be able to tell pretty, pretty rapidly if, it, if, it's, if it's gray or if it's uh, 
uh, originally gray or if it's originally black. Now, if you don't know if it's gray or black, you really can't determine it. Always go with solution finish black because the, the black will not make gray plastic black. It will just make the gray pop again and you'll be able to tell right away when you're wiping it down, yes, it was originally gray plastic. If you know it's gray and you use my fusion gray, you're going to get the uh, serious uh, a pop out of it, the results that you're looking for. But if you don't know, always go with the black. It will not make the plastic black. Maybe shade or two, but it won't turn it black. You're not going to make a mistake where it's, it's going to be uh, a blotchy or it's going to be kind of gray and kind of black uh, it, it's okay, hard to tell. Got, got like a really easy product here <laughs> yeah and you know it's uh, you know it's kind of wacky chris and i know you already know this but there's some car manufacturers that put both colors of plastic on the outside and it's, to me it's just like what Why? were they thinking like the the honda crv some years yes, had gray it, plastic and some years had a gray and black plastic well, exactly. you know, engineers, designers, <laughs> yeah. you gotta love them. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Here we got Jamie Carey. Hello, guys. Uh, we have my buddy up in Canada. Hello, that's Michael. Hello, both of you listening in from the from the pool. I guess Canada's finally out of its freeze. Um, <laughs> functional doc. Yes, Chris, the man is here. And actually, there is one in here that I thought was hilarious. Work. Uh, um, I can't, I'll, I'll get to it when I'm scrolling down, but they're calling you the ZZ top of detailing, which I think oh, is was awesome. Was awesome. Uh, <laughs> then we have Hiram Lopez. How's it going? Hi from HTL detailing in hey, San Hiram. Diego. Mm -hmm. um, we Met have, him out at SDC, awesome guy. We have Thomas saying hi to you, Chris. We have Huberto from Puerto Rico. That man is like on everybody's feed and he's always the first one to comment. He's saying, solution nice. finish, man. Uh, <laughs> Robert D. Trelizzi, our meatball guy. Hey, Mike yeah, and Chris. Yeah, there he is. Hey, Robert. Robert. Uh, we have Chris hey, Wayne. Hi, folks. Uh, here, I'm Lopez. You're a man, Chris. Mike, legend for sure. All right. Robert D. Trelizzi, solution finish is the best. Um, big old dog. Hopefully that echoing got fixed. I had some other people saying that it wasn't us. Uh, okay, we got Bob Bivens, best product out there, hands down. Hey, Bob, uh, uh, you used to work for Industrial Finishes, if I remember correctly, out there in uh, Eugene, Oregon, Springfield, Oregon. Uh, let's go here. We have Kelly Young. Uh, he's tuning in from Maine. Uh, nice. Do, 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 do we, uh, they're answering their questions, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Kirby has another one. Some of the newest cars seem to reject many of the coating products in a short period of time. Do the newer products take longer to gas off? Or is there like a, I'm gonna to add to it, or is there like a coating or newer plastics that has to wear off first before that? It could be something the dealership has applied. That's my, my first That's thought. That's exactly right. Yes, it is. They, I, you know, you're in the sales room, they're selling you a new car, they're gonna sell you this add-on. It's, you know, they're cheap, uh, uh, sealer spray and they spray everything they spray the plastic they spray the uh, the, the bumpers the hitches and it it does it, it, it it's the aerosol ones too right the aerosol ones they're gooey they're sticky it's quick fast Absolutely. and easy but it, it gets to the grill makes everything look dark and wet and the average person going to a dealership knows very little bit about detail and they just look and go wow that looks great same thing with all them greasy tire shines you know the average person looks and goes wow looks good we seasoned detailers look at them and go we just think what a mess but that's probably yep. what's happened is the dealership detailers applied something on there and this is going to go back to either wearing off or machine scrubbing off machine yeah. scrubbing I or just do like i do tell detailers like do not touch my car when you're in the dealership <laughs> <laughs> do not Okay, let's move along. We have Daniel coming in here, two of the best guys in detailing that I truly respect and admire. Whoa. Appreciate oh, thank it. You. Bow nice. down to you two. Uh, we have Patrice Lilan. Li Hi from Rupes, Italia. He loves solution oh, nice. finish. Um, I, I just thought <laughs> this one, I saw this one come in when, we, when you guys were talking. Richard, Hey, good afternoon. I won't be able to view today's show because I'm out currently on the road being chased by auditors, ex-attorneys, and ex-wives, but it's sure to watch it on YouTube later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> Very straight. Uh, I know pedal the to the metal. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, okay, we have Daniel coming back in. Over the top, uh, plastic sealer with solution finish and or fusion gray is a match made in heaven. We have, I I'm going to probably kill your name, Ghetto. Hi, guys, from Tucan, Argentina. Then we have another international, Marcus, coming in from Manchester, England, saying hi. Then another, uh, Mario, he's been on quite a few, I'm recognizing his name now. Hi, from Agua Calientes, Mexico. Um, I'm, from doing all these, my Spanish is getting better, Mike. Uh, oh, okay, here's a really good question. Uh, Ron coming in here, does Solution Finish have a shelf life? <laughs> <laughs> what was I'm that nice, Mike? I, I, I got a generally a, a pat answer for that when it comes to car care products, and you can uh, add what your own two cents is. Most, most, just generally speaking, most car care products are good for an average of three to five years as long as you keep them out of extreme cold and extreme heat. And then, of course, shake once in a while. I agree. You, you can put solution finish on a shelf, and part of the problem is you apply solution finish and it lasts so long Am I am I breaking up or no? No, you're, you're good. good. You're good. You're good. Okay. Good. It, it lasts so long that you put it on the shelf, and you know, six eight months later, you come and use it again. Again, it comes down to vigorously shake it, and if you really, if you really want to go the extra mile, it's been there for a year. What I do is I'll pull out the uh, the orifice reducer, the little hole in the top. I'll pop that out. I'll put a stick in it. You know, a, uh, a chopstick. I'll break it up and make sure that you're it's not plugging at the bottom uh, i used to say solution finish doesn't have a shelf life which technically it doesn't if you do that but two or three years i think um i think you you should really consider uh, getting a new bottle okay there you go straight from the right. man himself if you're you know yeah. a little bit goes a long ways and this is a pretty good sized bottle this product and, yeah like and, how uh, many cars could you get out of that yeah. bottle like if say you have a Dozens. A 1500 Chevy truck with plastic trim. How many, how many times could you go over that truck? Well, I'd say three or four or five, a, a dozen Ooh. times. A little bit goes a long All ways, right. but there's a lot of factors for that. If, if you're taking care of something in good shape, it's going to take less product. But what I was going to suggest is be the kind neighbor and walk over to Jim. Say, hey, Jim, I noticed the fenders on your Jeep are looking kind of scrappy. I'll let you borrow my solution finish. <laughs> Is that it? You, you have friends. <laughs> that is uh, if you have friends. Yes. All, right, all right, we have Renardo coming in. Awesome product. Chris West is awesome. Hey, Renardo. Uh, okay, let's go here. What about ceramic coating, uh, ceramic coating the plastic? Can you do it on top of solution finish? Oh, this is all you, Chris. <laughs> Did you get that, Chris? I may have dropped it. No, it's, it's really breaking up, and I'm frozen on the... Gotcha. Right. I'll, 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 I'll take that one. Uh, the, the, okay. the, the, the issue with ceramic uh, trim dressings is uh, the analogy I would use, and uh, Chris, uh, please do feel free to chime in. If you've ever got a high spot on paint or glass, so you, you coat a car, you come back in the next day and you got a high spot, you usually got to compound it to get it off. Even on the glass, you got to rub something on there pretty aggressively to get that high spot off. Would, if you, when you put this on, if you put a ceramic coating on plastic, there's no way to really compound it to get it off. So it's, it's kind of semi-permanent. And then the problem with that is, is f uh, taking care of that plastic in the future, because we know it's going to degrade, it's going to diminish in appearance. It's just going to be hard to do because you've sealed it. It's going to be harder to get the solution finish past that ceramic layer. So in my opinion, you should choose one route or the other. Either go with the solution finish system or pick whatever your favorite coating process is and then stick with it. But whichever one you do, stay on top of it. I always have this saying, it goes like this, find something you like, use it often. So continually use it. Don't just try to do the one and done, set it and forget it. I think they were asking if, if you did the solution finish and you could apply a coating on top of that. Sure you could. You, you could, I think what's, I, I don't wanna speak for Chris, but I think you could, but the, the, you'd have to somehow uh, make sure it's very clean and dry before you put the coating on. Make sure it's thoroughly right. cured. Yeah. And, and part of that problem is once you put on a ceramic coating over the top of solution finish, you have pretty much locked out solution finish's ability to ever to absorb back in, into the plastic. 
because the the coating itself will absolutely uh, oxidize and go uh, it has its own lifespan as well once that turns uh, turns gray and chalky uh, there's nothing you can do with it you can't compound it off like uh, Mike's saying on the, uh, on a paint because it gets into pores uh, pick one or the other is the best advice you can get you know if you start putting on a, a ceramic coating from the very very beginning of the life a, on a new vehicle stick with that okay all right here's the one that was grant that came in and said that chris yancy chris west is the cz top of the detailing world that how <laughs> well, to get that funny. on screen nice. uh, he's bad he's nationwide <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's we got Jamie funny. Carey here. I just recently purchased a 2002 Avalanche. Yeah, that's the one that's oh. been neglected. You know, that's just the plastic just didn't hold up. I ordered the solution finished gray for it and can't wait to use it. I love the black. I love the black. It works great. Yeah, those, I think that's the number one car that I see everywhere. It's like I, Chevy did something wrong those years with plastic because they didn't last. I mean, yeah. not at all. And, and Chris is an expert. Chris, isn't the Chevy Avalanche, isn't the plastic cladding from five different manufacturers that make the different components? Good point. Uh, people think I use the Avalanche because it has so much plastic on it. You know, quarter panels, running boards, uh, uh, the tonneau, uh, tonneau cover, the cab extensions. That's one reason. But the biggest reason is it has six different manufacturers manufacture the the different components on that vehicle so because of the different types of plastic and polymers used it all oxidizes differently but i designed solution finish that it will be able to handle all of those conditions so that that was my my biggest obstacle when i started because i could get it really good for one piece but it wasn't working as good on a, another manufacturer's piece. So that's that took a couple of years to figure out, but uh, you're right, it, it has plastic on it that, like the back, uh, the back cap for the uh, tailgate is a very, very high quality plastic. It's the last, it stays black for a long time. The cab extensions go to shit extremely fast. So. Uh, I'm, I, it, I think you're going to be extremely happy with the gray on your uh, avalanche. And, and uh, I th when, when you first told me this, it was an eye opener to me, and I think it is to everybody that hears this, because most people think if you buy a Chevy or a Honda, whatever the vehicle is, that the entire thing was made by the same company on the same <laughs> assembly line, yep, but nope. that's not true. Uh, nope. Major car manufacturers farm out different components. They're all assembled at one point onto the car, but they're they're not all made by the same assembly. There's not a there's not a way to make all that kind of stuff in one That'd location. That'd be a huge huge plant. Yeah, right. and there's a lot of specialty like type a, products. Whoops, way to like go. Like a, a tonneau cover, a tonneau cover is made by the tonneau cover companies. The bumpers are made by the bumper companies. The running boards and the steel for the running boards is made from another company. So, you know, you can, when you think about it, it makes it makes all the sense in the world. You're living life dangerously. <laughs> He's living life dangerously there. All right, let's go, let's move on. Renardo, can, Mike, can you ask Chris about the sealant that goes over the solution finish and will AG carry it? I think we covered it pretty yes, well. Yes, we will. Uh, Chris says we should have it within about 30 days. All right. Yeah. Um, Jamie, trying to find a product to restore plastic is difficult to find. Hello? You're here. Hello. This is it. <laughs> um, Where's the angel singing? Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> This Matthew Tron, uh, what about water-based protectant such as vi vinyl rubber protectant? I think that's when you guys were talking about cleaning the plastic and stuff and when that was coming in. Yeah, well, uh, none of that stuff's gonna, uh, none of that stuff's gonna last very long because it's water-based and, and that's kind of a good thing. Like I like to use water-based uh, tire, all-in-one uh, tire cleaner conditioners on tires because 
Uh, it doesn't last long, so that means I can get it off. But that's because I think differently than most people. Most people want something that just lasts a long time. What they don't understand, if it lasts a long time, it's going to be hard to get off. It is going to get dirty, but it's hard to get off, so it's hard to clean it to put something fresh back on. So I like, for tires, I kind of like things that are temporary because I'm going to clean it sooner or later. But for a plastic trim, like on a car, that's, that's a, it's just going to be a more, more temporary fix than something like Solution Finish. Nothing is permanent. Just like you and me, we're not permanent. We, we got an expiration date. Oh, wait a minute, there, there, there is a thing about your uh, Terminator detailing, but it, it already scrolled past it. But being on that subject right there, yeah. wouldn't, and let me just throw this out there, this is my mind thinking. Wouldn't put in, uh, putting uh, like armor all, oil-based, any type of dressing on plastic, wouldn't that increase the heat and actually make the plastic oxidize and go worse or would it actually the oils and stuff neutral you know well chris actually talked about this previously because he says one of the problems with is the, the those types of products already are going to cause more problems than they fix over time okay yeah, yeah. i was just thinking it was like kind of an, a little interesting thing um uh, i get a, a, all of my plastic parts from a uh a body shop you know they save everything that they tear off the cars for me and i go to pick apart like you're talking about mike and i get tons of plastic uh, in that regard when i get plastic that is really black and it and, it, and it's not going to do me any good to cut up for demos what i do is i lay it all out and i spray liquid copying machine silicone on it from a little hudson spray i soak it and I leave it up on the roof. When I find that when I put the silicone on there, it oxidizes five times as fast up on the roof than if it's just a part uh, out in the sun. So, you know, I have thoroughly examined the the effects of uh, a silicone on plastic. Uh, you put you put silicone on half of a bumper, and the other one is is. Uh, untreated and leave it on the roof half of that bumper is going to be so oxidized in four or five months compared to the other sides so so it acts as an accelerant it, it accelerates the oxidation process and there is a chemically uh, chemical uh, action that happens so basically as it's it, as it's uh, gassing off it creates that hydroperoxide gas at the surface level of the part which accelerates oxidation five to ten times faster depending on the plastic there's no good, doubt about it uh, good to uh, know now here's yeah. something let me just interject here sometimes up on uh, facebook and youtube instagram social media platforms you'll see people take a heat gun to some uh, very oxidized pebble texture plastic and, and it's bring just a it back miracle magically. it turns it black instantly and uh but i think most common comments is people say well it, 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 that's a very temporary fix and now it's gonna it's gonna eventually fade back to how it looked probably before. quicker because you're kind of <laughs> doing some things to that plastic that <laughs> wasn't designed to do yeah do you have any the, comment the on easy, that chris yeah the easy answer is absolutely that's an old hack just like putting on uh let's say peanut butter oil or linseed oil on your plastic but when you when you heat the plastic up to that that extent what it's doing is it's burning off the oxidation that's on the surface of the part so it tr does turn black you are destroying your plastic you do it five or six times and it's, it's going to start the bands start popping and it starts getting fuzzy so you do it because it looks really good and you think, wow, that's it. That's the best hack I've seen. Do it two or three times and you will be replacing your, your fenders, your plastic. There is no doubt about it. So uh, if you have a car that I, you're trying to unload and trying to get the best dollar out of a used car lot, you can do that really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move well, on. It, it would real. seem like you're going to crystallize that plastic. You're going to harden mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and, and take some of the elasticity. It's a ability to expand and contract when exposed to <laughs> extremes of heat and cool. I just want to know how many cars have actually went up in flames from yeah. people actually heating it too much in a car on fire. <laughs> yeah. But speaking well, of that, hold on. Chris had oh, something sorry. to say there. Go ahead, Chris. I, I've seen them. I've seen them warp it. I've seen a textured plastic all of a sudden turn smooth in one area. I've seen them <laughs> a bubble their paint against the uh, plastic. There's, there's absolutely no reason in the world to use a heat gun 
on plastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's dangerous. It ruins your plastic. What it's doing is it's drawing out all of the release agents in the plastic, which makes your plastic brittle. And, and the bands that hold plastic together, the polymers start uh, popping. And then you're, it's, you're, you're, you're asking for trouble. You know, it's, if you want to do it one time, then fine. But you're ruining your plastic. Then get it's, rid of the car. <laughs> it's what I would call a caveman yeah. technique. Uh, yeah, all right, let's move is. on. Uh, we got one here. Actually, this is a good question. I get this quite a lot on Detailing 101. Phillips coming in. Does it matter if the plastic is hot from sunlight? Can you apply this in direct sun? Yeah. Uh, I always say with solution finish, if it's comfortable enough to apply it, then you can do it. So if you're in Arizona sun and it's 125 degrees out, it's not comfortable for you to apply it, so don't apply it to the plastic. Uh, yeah, I think that it... It, it absolutely dries it out too fast. It, 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 it takes off the, the modified oils. Uh, uh, don't give it time to actually set. If it's too cold, then the, the plastic pours. Uh, it, there's moisture in it when it's that cold. So I look at it, if you feel like you can walk outside and, and do it and, and feel comfortable, that's the right heat range. So if it's 40, 50 degrees and, and no moisture in the air, you can do it. If it's uh, 9, 80 or 90 degrees outside, you can do it. I've never really seen uh, the difference between uh, solution finish won't freeze. You know, you put it in a freezer and it won't freeze, uh, which is good when guys put it on the porch and, you know, uh, places unknown that freeze uh, at night. So uh, that's, it's not a problem. You know, let common sense prevail. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Work smarter, not harder, people. Okay, let's go here. Uh, this is, they're talking back in between each other, but I would like this because I asked them, like, how the hell, I see a lot of different ways that people apply it. This guy, uh, Neil, this is Humberto. I prefer applying solution finish with a foam painter stick that goes a little bit, goes a long way, and spreads extremely even for me. After two minutes, remove high spots and two hours be between the next coat. Oh. So I was, I've seen it on Detailing One where people airbrush it, they'll put it on a sponge, they use the little painter stick like Humberto was talking. What's your favorite way, Chris, to apply this? Just with a microfiber or how, what is your go-to way? Detailers and uh, DIY guys can't help themselves to try to figure out better ways of applying anything. Uh, I've seen them take the spray gun and, and do the window cowls because it's hard to get in. That's right. fine. The grills, uh, getting it inside the, the, comb, the, the little uh, uh, honeycombs of the grills, that's fine. The problem is you want to be able to wipe off the excess. So if you're if you're doing that, as long as you take a brush and you and, a, and you mop up the the excess that you get from it, uh, my fr my friend Sergio Fierro on avalanches, just like Mike cleans with the machines, he applies solution finish with a black uh, finishing pad on his machines, and it's pretty incredible uh, how fast he can do an avalanche with the machine. Uh, especially the big areas like the tonneau covers. So I, I've seen it all. As long as you're getting solution finish on the part being treated and you're able to wipe off the excess, it doesn't really matter how you apply it. Go crazy. <laughs> we just call that freestyling. Yeah. Freestyling. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, of right. course, Talking like freestyling, here's Daniel. I've used Prevail sprayers well with great success, especially with those intricate grills and side-by-side -side rubber boots. So, I mean, That's as long exactly as you're able right. to get it off, I, I guess what Chris is saying is, you know, as long as you get it off, you're, you're good. Now, yep. could you, no, never mind. I'm just going to, no, I'm not going to read. Okay, does, okay, here's one about your, your protectant. Does over the top only go on solution finish or can it be applied as its own as a protectant? Good Absolutely. The, the, the thing that I didn't realize when I was developing it is how good it was going to be on brand new plastic. It gives it a little sheen to it. It makes it the new plastic pop a little bit, but the best thing about it is, as I mentioned before, it's sunscreen for your plastic. So you're doing what Mike's saying, preventive maintenance. You put 
over the top on new plastic and you're going to uh, extend its longevity and you're going to prevent the oxidation. It's going to happen, but you're going to extend the, uh, uh, the length of time that it starts to happen. I know it's my Jeep, my, uh, my, my, my Jeep, my wife's Jeep is looking gorgeous still because when you're down here for the class, that's when we, you gave us these test bottles of it and it's amazing. It, her, her Jeep, the black is still black on my plastic or her plastic, I should say, and it's holding in there. Water beads off, goes right off. It's nice. I, I love that product. Yep. Nice. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, all right, here we have one question, another one about the sealer. How often should you apply another coat of the sealer? Is it like, does it come off like three months, six months, a year? See, the reason I call it over the top is because you, you're able to put the plastic sealer over the top of solution finish. But the other part about it is you're able to put solution finish over the top of the plastic sealer because it bonds together, which you can't do with the ceramic coatings. So that's the kind of the, uh, the dichotomy of that. Uh, it doesn't last for months and months. I'm saying, I think every three or three months, if you apply it, you're doing yourself a favor because you're, you're getting that uh, protective uh, uh, feature on your plastic. So if I had it where it, it, it would last a year, year and a half, it's too thick to, for solution finish to ever go over the top of it. So it's got that little balance uh, you're using more often, but just like solution finish, a little bit goes a long way. The little four ounce bottle that Mike has on the table um, should do five or six uh, uh, treatments with absolutely no problem with a lot of plastic on the vehicle. Okay. So, yeah. Way to think that through. Yeah, I know, right? He's yeah. like, you got to do it. You can do it both ways. Yeah. You're thinking outside yeah. of the box, Chris. You are ZZ Top. Um, <laughs> Or we should say SF top, solution finish top for the win. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> all right, bad joke. All right, we have our buddy from the UK, Detailing Law UK. Dun, dun. Hey, gents. I have to do that every time he comes in. I just, I don't know, <laughs> he does it. Uh, this one, Brad, just started using solution finish so far. I'm very happy with the results. There you go. Some customers are Appreciate loving it. what you're doing. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Here's a good one. Big old dog coming in here. Are there some types of exterior plastic that solution finish won't work on or absorb into? Yes. Uh, solution finish will always make the surface uh, look better when you apply it. But uh, Range Rovers and Volvos, they use a different type of uh, a process for their manufacturing there it's more of a a, a very hard uh, PVC type uh, rubberized it's not plastic but it's the type of polymer it is and it has absolutely zero pores it's very it's almost like a, a, a case hardened plastic so if when you apply solution finish it looks good but it becomes more of a dressing than it is a plastic restorer because it cannot absorb into that kind of plastic. You know, like a PVC pipe, you can put it on and it will look good because it's got a little, little it darkens it and it's got a little sheen to it and you're putting it on the part, but it's not going to get that long-term durability. It's always going to make it look better, but not the long-term durability that most people are looking for when they're using, what they're used to with solution finish. So okay. with the Range Rover type of material, would a person be well off to just stick with this product? Would that the be over a the good top? option? That's really what I'm thinking. Uh, if you take if you take an oxidized uh, a piece of trim that's uh, smooth, let's say what is it? it? What is it, Mike? The Xterras? Is that the is that saying it right? Yeah, the, yeah, Nissan Xterra. Yeah, that's a very hard smooth plastic and I stop using solution finish on it I would always go to the over the top if I have a hard a hard plastic or hard rubber I would go to immediately go to over the top and give it that little sheen it's going to darken it it may not be as black as solution finish but you're going to you're going to be 
happy with the results and the durability of it. Uh, okay. And this just goes back to when it's brand new, start, find something you like, start using, using it. it. Don't wait till it turns uh, ugly and then try to fix it. And I, okay. And Let's go funny, into a little bit of a speed round because I know Chris has got to get out of here. So um, we have Adnan. Hey guys, is it better to heat the trim before applying the solution finish? So I guess this would be like if you're in a cold area, would it be better to bring it into the garage and let the plastic warm up so it isn't so cold? The, the coldness isn't the, the main factor. It's the moisture that's in the cold air okay. that I don't like. You know, uh, you want the, your plastic trim to be 100% dry before you put on an oil-based, solvent-based product. Okay. So uh, guys will wash their car uh, and then wipe down uh, the plastic, wipe down their, their paint, and Im Im immediately put on solution finish. I don't like that. I would rather have it, uh, you wait a day, you want it to be completely dry. And even though it might not be beating water, it still has moisture in the plastic uh, and at that microscopic le level that Mike was talking about. So. Uh, no, it's not the coldness, it's the moisture that's uh, a problem. That will get you. Okay, yep. Yep. all right, let's go to here to Duncan. Um, this was a good one. I'm surprised this didn't come up sooner. In a full detail process, where in the process would you recommend treating the plastic with solution finish and then treating with the coating, i.e. before or after paint, clear coating, polishing? What, 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 like if you're doing this in yep. your process, where would you do it at? Well, according to what Chris just said, if you wash the car, you'd want to go ahead and start doing other things. Allow so as you're dry. doing other things, that plastic trim is continuing to dry out. One of the things that I do is back over here, Yancey, there's a shop vac air mover. Yeah, well, yeah. no, it's not back over there. Well, that means well, someone's borrowed it and not returned it. But a lot of times I'll wash the car uh, the night before I'm gonna actually detail it and I turn the shop back on and just get moving air circulating throughout the garage. And this is a great drying effect. Uh, but according to what Chris just said to answer your question, if, uh, if you've just washed the car and you're doing everything in one day, you'd wanna go ahead and do other things. If you can, get a fan going so you got moving air in there so the plastic can be completely thoroughly dry before you put the solution finish on. Well, think of it like this yep, way. That's like, true. I dress my tires at the very end when I'm done with everything because I want the rubber to dry. So when you're doing the tires, you know, putting the final dressing on the tires, then you can do your trim because then by that time you're done with yep. everything else. Um, I'm trying to figure this question out. Maybe you guys can help me. Adon, it came in and again. One more question on, the, on another topic. What makes a hard, a hard coat, a hard clear coat hard per soft? Can't seem to find it all over the internet. Oh, I get it. What makes the difference between the paints? It's just the paint manufacturers. They have different yeah, ways of doing the, it. The, chemicals. the formula for the paint. Yeah. There's high solids, uh, the, the solvents, the reducers. And th that's why you got to just become good at doing a test spot because all paints are going to change. And even paints on the same model car can change, you know, within the same year. So you, that's why I don't like when people say, you know, Hondas all have soft paint. Well, generally that's true. You never, you never know until you do a test spot if the paint is soft or hard. Mm -hmm. And the only way to figure that out, and everybody wants a chart or an yeah, easy way to do it, it's not gonna happen. It's called it experience. comes from experience, okay? So okay, that's it. let's go here. Kelly, this is a throw out to your daughter, Chris. Chris, your daughter is a nice lady. Met her at Ed Twillinger's class. You are a great guy too. <laughs> Thank you, she'll appreciate that. Uh, we got to come up with a rock star for her, you know, we got to figure that out. the Joan Jet of the, I don't know, we'll have to figure that out. <laughs> um, Daniel Kinder, also another trick to see the plastic is gray or black is uh, after it's oxidized so bad is to apply a small drop of water on it. If it turns black, it was originally black. Learn that from the master himself, Chris West. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I'll get it wet, uh, oil, a little bit of oil, uh, definitely, you know, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's brake fluid, transmission fluid, uh, Wesco oil, put a little oil on it, and it does the same thing as water, but the difference is it stays, uh, uh, the water evaporates real quick, so it's kind of hard to tell. You wipe a little dime area, a quarter size area with oil, and if it if it turns black, then it's definitely black plastic. But he's sometimes, right. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when we're on, when I'm around a car, whatever I'm doing, I need a little oil. I just check the oil with the dipstick and pull that oil yeah. off. Boom, I got a little bit of oil. You're bad. Yeah, okay, so let's go to Matt. Uh, will this cover up any wax stains in plastic trim? 
Yeah, if you're if you're buffing the car and you hit that plastic, um, let's say you don't tape it off and um, that's not your process and it gets a little little um, uh, wax residue. Guys have tried a million ways to get the plastic the the wax out of the plastic. Solution finish for some reason because of the solvent in it will actually absorb into the uh, wax and you won't see it. it it takes it completely away it's absolutely gone so camouflage it's a great trek yeah, yeah camouflage yeah it's i i had a mercedes benz here a couple of weeks ago and someone had uh, creamed out the rubber gasket around the sunroof with a wax and i cleaned it as well as i could in the wash process to the point where i was using a horsehair brush you know an apc just gently scrubbing i got as clear as got a lot better did not get a perfect and hit a solution finish Boom, done, look great. Yep. All right. yep. I just scanned through a couple of these. I'm gonna do just a couple more. Speed round? Uh, very quick, because I know Chris has got to get off here. Um, pop, 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 pop. Oh, shoot, I just went past where I was at. Where was I just lost, because I was scrolling. Well, while you're looking, I'm just gonna say this again. If you're detail cars for money, these are two products you should have in your arsenal. She's okay. Just need to have them. I found it DC Foggle one <laughs> your guys's names kill me <laughs> hello from Colorado what about a different color trim like tan or whatever can you use this on those so say you have tan plastic what happens okay I came up with a blue and a tan uh, solution finish type product it works extremely well it's, it's crazy cool it's not worth for me to uh, it's not worth it for me to put it in production because it's like one percent maybe of the vehicles actually have it right so there's no there's absolutely no market in it what I do with a tan or uh, let's just stick with tan tan plastic clean it really good with Mike's method and then apply over the top over the top of that and I think it's going to give you uh, close enough to the results you're looking for and and that'd oxidized. be things like Ford Expeditions, uh, Ford Explorers, some of the tan, white and tan it's, models have that ugly brown tan plastic. Yep. Here's the first tip, yep. don't buy those cars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're ugly. All right, so, this one. You can, you can, go ahead. Uh, sorry, uh, this one, Chris Wayne. This is another testament to your product. Uh, I wonder if he's related to Bruce Wayne, but anyways, Chris, thank you for creating Solution Finish. My neighbor has a old 2000 Avalanche, another Avalanche, for beating it around in. I had to cover the beast in Solution Finish and he, tell, he can, tells me consistently how thrilled he is. So, That's testament awesome. to the product I there. Never, I, I never get tired of hearing it because I, uh, I'm always thinking that Solution Finish could be better. Solution Finish, very few people know, is on its third generation of formula and I'm I'm waiting for a, a product to come back from um, we sent from uh, Switzerland that is an additive that I'm playing with and it's going to be that much better I noticed that Mike's bottle is an older bottle of solution finish that label uh, I haven't had for well over a year and a half probably two years <laughs> so you got the See, Mike, you, you, you got the little puddle drip in the picture there? Yeah, yeah. I, I eliminated that. I eliminated that almost two years ago. So that just shows how Mike's still using the same bottle for two I know, right? Years it's, it, is, it is getting pretty yeah. empty there. Yeah. And, and I have like six yeah. bottles of these. So when I teach my classes, I like to have a lot of this out so everybody can kind of have access to it. But you know, we just haven't sure. used it up, but it also stays in this, you know, air conditioned building and it, it's not exposed to ex extreme cold here in South Florida. And because it's inside, it's not extreme right. heat. And you know, so I tell yeah. you, still works is good. But it's so, okay. Let's testimony go here. Yep. to your chemistry. Oh, we go to Andy here. Chris, how did you come up with the name for your product? Oh, good question. My wife did. Uh, Better answer. We <laughs> yeah. No. Ed, it was very difficult because people don't realize this, but before I came up with the name, a trim restore, 11 years ago, nobody called anything a trim restore. It was all dressings. It was always conditioners. It, nobody said that their, their uh, plastic product was a trim restore. So I'm trying to think of a way to d describe what solution finish is. And my wife said, I said, well, 
it's a solution that we're using and it you know and she said what about solution finish and i just it just resonated with me and uh, because it was her it seemed like a good idea to take her suggestion and, and you wanted to be able to sleep with both eyes shut at night <laughs> instead of just right. one <laughs> And, it, and it's kind of kind of funny. Solution finish is a solution to your problem. It is a solution because it's a um, it's a product, so it, it's a liquid solution. It finishes the uh, the trim to the point where uh, you don't have to touch it again. So it's kind of a little entendre thing that that we use, you know. Okay, let's go here. Can you apply this to a Jeep Wrangler hardtop, like a, a plastic hardtop? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Guys, all right. guys do it all the time. All right. We have Mike coming in here. Not you, Mike. Another Mike. Really love Solution Finish. Okay. Then we're going to go here. Beverly, Solution Finish totally restored my black trim on my 2014 Honda CRV. 12 months later, it still looks great. Then th I'm surprised nice. this question came in at the very end. Um, Jay Moyer, 90. P.S. Will this ruin run in paint? Oh, look it up. Will this run in rain or wash onto the paint when it gets wet? Well, if you follow the instructions and you've applied solution finish and you have buffed off the excess surface oil with your microfiber towel, there would be nothing for to uh, there would be nothing to uh, uh, drain off. There would be nothing to wash off. Uh, yeah, I've never if, seen if it happen it did, in my life. So yeah, okay. the only time Let I ever saw it where it was a problem is. You, you, you put it on a door bumper and you're pushing it against the edge there. Well, what happens is if there's a, a space there, solution finish will drip down in between the plastic and the paint. And then when it rains, it pushes it all the way through. But that's only yeah. because you haven't, you haven't uh, wiped product. it off. But yeah, but no, it will not. Good question. Okay, Wax Ninja Detail. This is the second last question. Uh, can you put this on tires? And I guess rubber or other, can you, what happens if you put it on rubber? Rubber, vinyl, and plastic. The thing about rubber is there's no pores to it, so it's a dressing. Uh, I think Michael can test this. There's better things to put on tires than to be using your solution finish. Guys do it. Um, I don't see the, the big difference. I don't see the benefit to it, but um, uh, I think there's just a, it's a, there's a niche with tires that are, is better than solution finish. I think. It's better options. Better options. Yeah, better oh. options. Yeah. Okay. This will be the last one. We have Sarah. Uh, she's always looking in on these. Are in a 19 or in an 87 Grand National that has some white on the side of the plastic piece by the front bumper. Not sure what that is, but any suggestions or would solution finish cover it up? Could be Sounds past like the point of no right? return. I was going to say, it, 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 being a 1987, it's, you know, what, 20, 25 years old. It, it could be, it's been neglected so long that that white you're seeing is, uh, is the plastics actually changed. So solution finish yep. will probably improve it, yep. might not fix it 100%. What yeah, should have happened is in 1988, somebody should have started doing, doing something to the car to take care of it instead of waiting till 2021 to try to address the problem. And, uh, and Sarah, if you're dealing with the customer, I always take whatever the problem with the car is and kind of put it back on them. And I do it like this. Did you buy the car new? And they're gonna say yes or no. If they say yes, then say, well, what have you, you know, not been doing for all these decades? If they say, no, I bought it used, I say, well, did you get a good deal? And everybody always says, oh yeah, I got a great deal. And they go, well, that's, that's what, what you, you get, get for a great deal, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> never, never, never take the problem as your problem. It's the car's problem or the owner's problem. All right, with right. that, uh, I think that will bring us to the end of the show. Chris, I want to say thank you. You are a rock star in this industry and we really appreciate you showing up and taking some of these questions and I know you gotta yeah. go, so I just wanna say thank you again. You guys thank are the you. best, love ya. All right, and with that, don't forget to like and share and all that other good things. We will be back next week and we have two special guests next week. See, right up there in the corner, right there. That's two special guests coming in. Oh, okay. Well, cool. actually, no, that's where Chris left, but oh, yeah, yeah. we have, have that. So see you next week, next Wednesday. Now, don't forget, you have that one spot right there. <laughs> and, the uh, you know, I got to go. <laughs>